Welcome. In this video, you'll learn how to install Slack for service. We'll also cover the licenses and permissions needed, the installation process, and key considerations and best practices. Let's get started. To access Salesforce Cloud integrations, you need a user license for both Salesforce Cloud and Slack. Contact your Salesforce or Slack admin to obtain them. The first install of the Service Cloud for Slack integration sets the overall permissions for the org. It's important that the person installing the app has Salesforce admin access. Either make a Slack admin a Salesforce admin, or have a Salesforce admin sit with a Slack admin to install. You're not limited to just one Salesforce Cloud integration. If you have other cloud products, such as Sales, CRM, or Analytics, you can install those integrations too. For more information on obtaining licenses, check out Slack for Service on our trailhead. Next, let's go over the steps for installing Slack for Service. To install Slack for Service, you must enable Slack Setup in Lightning, open Setup and enter Slack in the Quick Find box. Search for Slack Setup. Read and agree to the terms and conditions. Under Further Setup, go to Service Cloud for Slack. Enable the Service Cloud for Slack app then return to the initial Slack setup page. Assign the pre-configured Slack service user permission set or create your own. For more information on creating permission sets, please review Setup Swarming User Permissions in Salesforce Help. To install the service cloud for Slack app, set up the app in Slack and select it as your collaboration tool. Next, connect the Slack for Service app into your new Slack workspace. Download the service cloud for Slack app from your app directory. Select any channel and enable the service app to view, create, and post. Next, select the Home tab of the service app and choose Connect. From the drop-down menu, select any channel. Return to the Setup Quick Find box and enter Swarming. Select Slack as your collaboration tool. Next, turn on Swarming, which enables service agents to create Slack channels or threads dedicated to specific customer cases. Ultimately, this establishes a platform for experts across your business to collaborate and resolve complex cases or larger incidents faster. Follow these steps to turn on Swarming. From Setup in the Quick Find box, enter Swarming. Then, select Swarming. Select the toggle to turn on Swarming. Be sure to assign the appropriate permission sets to Swarming feature users. From Setup in the Quick Find box, enter Profiles and then select Profiles. Select the user profile you want to give access to swarming objects and select Edit. Under Standard Object Permissions, you can grant Read, Create, Edit, and Delete permissions to the user profile. And that will do it. In case you missed it, the initial install of the Service Cloud for Slack app sets the overall permission for the org. Make sure the person installing the app has admin access for both Salesforce and Slack. Next, Let's move on to key considerations and best practices when using Slack for service. It's important to consider which version of Slack is right for your org. Whether you choose Slack Enterprise Grid or Slack Non-Enterprise Grid, your choice will impact your org's testing and developing process. Consider development, permissions, Slack and Slack channels when evaluating your options. The Slack Enterprise Grid version comes with a developmental sandbox where you can build and learn without making changes in production. What's more, you can safely connect your Salesforce sandbox to Slack for initial and ongoing testing. Keep in mind that the Slack non-enterprise grid offers less flexibility since it doesn't come with a Slack sandbox. Before go live, test everything in a Salesforce sandbox connected to Slack production. After you finish testing, disconnect the sandbox org and connect production at GoLive. For further testing after GoLive, you'll need to upgrade to Slack Enterprise Grid or continue creating free trial orgs. Next, we'll review permissions considerations. To prevent any errors, make sure Salesforce admins assign themselves the correct Salesforce Slack permissions before installing the app. Both admins and users need Slack service user, Salesforce with Slack, read, and create edit permissions. Only Salesforce admins can set access levels. Before installing Slack for service, make the Slack admin a Salesforce admin, or have the Salesforce admin sit with the Slack app installer and log in when prompted. 
Slack Enterprise Grid offers mass provisioning of apps so they are pre-installed on users' devices. However, Salesforce integration doesn't currently support this feature. When you create a Slack channel, its channel access is automatically set to public. To launch a private channel, you must specifically select private during setup. Keep in mind that you can't change a private swarm channel back to public after you created it. You'll need to add the Service Cloud for Slack app manually for any existing channels you want to use for swarming. For large organizations, note that there is a 250,000 active channel limit per workspace. Due to this limitation, it's recommended that you create a scheduled archiving workflow so that you avoid hitting that limit. Best practices from Salesforce support recommends that you create processes and structure thoughtfully and early in the process, invest early on the people strategy and overinvest in change management, introduce key performance indicators to reinforce collaboration, pilot with small groups and iterate before fully launching, Omnichannel is a customer service and console-based Salesforce feature that automatically routes all work items, such as cases or leads, to agents based on the agent's capacity, priority, and skill set. Set it up to take full advantage of the Slack for Service app. For more information, check out help.salesforce.com or visit us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching.